आता श्री कृष्ण इंटर डिफिक वृंदावन लेफ्ट दिस वर्ल्ड कंज्यूम आयरन इज केम एट वंस so all the rishis masters were very very much worry kalyu is very suffering you people will be not more than 100 years age all will be engaged in sense gratification lady then men both will give up their religion always in sense gratification what to do so all indian sadhus realize vaishno achar they were they came to namisha india there all the rishis bahasi were there and they began to discuss about them what we should do they told to suta goswami that you have heard everything from your guru dev sino sukdev goswami you are very intelligent you know Brahma Sutra. You know all Purans, Pancham Bhai, Mahabharat, everything you know. Very intelligent. So, Prayen all Parvisha, Sabya class means you get it, na? Manda so Manda batayo. मंद भाग्या पत्रिता दीपुल ऑफ दी कलियु ऑल पाय देर लाइफ वेरी शॉर्ट इवेन इफ यू वी कैन थिंक that even 100 years is but half of our age goes in sleeping and 20 years from 80 to 100 too old we cannot do anything and from childhood to 20 years it takes so much to learn how to maintain our life thus this uncontrolled persons what they can do so you know you are sadhu how our soul will be happy jayatma jena atma samprasitati i am not ask for body happiness 
and mind activities. Because they used to know that we are soul. So how our soul can be happy? And then Sutta Goswami, he did pranam to his Guru Dev. And then he began to tell something, what he has heard from his Guru Dev. And his Guru Dev has read, read from his father and Guru Dev. Shavai Punsa Paro Dharmo Chato Bhakti Radhok Kaje Ahetukya Patihata Jayatma Sam Prashidati. He telling that for all living beings there is a Parama Dharma. Not material dharma. To do bhakti in the Lord's feet of Adhoksha Prabhu Krishwain Krishna. Without any reason. Apratihata. And by that, by serving that Adhoksha. Out of mind and body and vachan. Vachan means words. And then by serving we can be happy. This is transcendental bhakti. The Manubhist Purak of of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu by the mercy of Srila Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Srila Rupa Goswami had given a definition of bhakti. Anya vilasita sunnam jnan karma dhyana apitam anupalle na krishna nusilanam bhakti uttam. It covers everything. What? Before had been told and what will be told afterward. Very good definition. What is the meaning? You. Yes. Guruve Gauru Chandaya Radhikaya Tadale Krishna Krishna Bhakta Tadabhakta No Nama Sri Rupa Goswami, who fulfilled the innermost heart desire of Radhabhav Juti Savalitam Nomi Krishna Swarupam of the combined avatar of Radha Krishna, he gave one definition of Paribhasya of Bhakti. Of course, many definitions of Bhakti have been given but Rupa Goswami collected, collected everything that was in them and also gave something that was not given before. So very quickly, Anyabilasita Sunyam Gana Karmadi Navitam Anukulena Krishna Sanam Bhakti Uttama. We have heard this many times from Guru Maharaj, how each syllable has so many different meanings. But Rupa Goswami has given us the definition of Uttam Bhakti or pure devotion. It is characterized by <clears throat> Suruplaksham means intrinsic symptoms and Bahiranga, some external symptoms. Anyabilasita sunya. At first, that pure devotion should be completely devoid of any material desires. Desires for liberation, desires for elevation of the heavenly planets, desires for yogic perfection, any type of material desire in this world, any type of material desire in the heavenly planets. Anya vilasita sunya. Sunya means devoid of. Therefore, Uttam Bhakti, one of the first symptoms we'll have to see is that it's completely devoid of any touch of self desire. Krishna Bhakti Niskam Ataiva Shanti Sakala Shanti 
Only the devotee of Krishna is completely without desire because he doesn't desire anything for himself, therefore he has no lust. All his desires are to fulfill the desires and for the pleasure of Krishna. Therefore Bhakti must be completely devoid of any self-interest. Anyabilas, and one may ask why Anyabilas Sita? Sita means, the Bhagavad Swami has said, in times of emergency, for example, when Draupi Devi, when she was being stripped naked by Dusasan, that time was an emergency. She prayed, Krishna Rakasaranam Aptu Jivatahari. Hey Krishna, protect my shame. So Sri Rupa Goswami has described, even though it may appear to be some type of desire for one's own interest, for Draupi to protect her womanly chastity, still because this is an emergency, it's not devoid of pure bhakti. Therefore, Anyabilasata Sunyam Jnana Karmadi Navita. The pure bhakti should not be covered by jnana or karma. So Guru Maharaj explains, jnana is of many types. So jnana means knowledge. But without knowledge, one cannot exist in this world. Even to eat, even to tie my shoelace, even to drive the car, is one type of knowledge. Therefore, one cannot be without knowledge in this world. But knowledge should not cover bhakti. Knowledge should be used in a way that is favorable to Bhagavan. So generally there are two types of knowledge in regards to spiritual topics. One is tatpada gyan. That means knowledge of my position, my position as a servant of the Supreme Lord. Knowledge of Krishna's position. Knowledge of Maya tattva, Bhakti tattva, Jiva tattva, Ishwara tattva. This tattva gyan or knowledge in relationship to Krishna should not be given up. But the type of gyan which should be completely given up is that but, <clears throat> Brahma Atma Eka Supa Gyan. That knowledge where the Jiva does not admit there's any separation between himself and Bhagavan. But we say impersonalism or Advaita Vaya. That ad Advaita Vaya should not cover Bhakti. <coughs> Therefore finally in the, in the last sense, like the Bhutabhasis, they are the complete example that they have given up even knowledge of Krishna's position as being the Supreme Personality of Godhead. If a gyanī praya samudha pasyana mante eva jivanti satna karatam baladiya vatam. Finally, in the last sense, even that knowledge that Krishna is the Supreme Lord, even that will not cover our bhakti. And that's manifested in the hearts of the Vrijvasis. So knowledge should not cover bhakti. It should be equal <coughs> in a favorable way towards devotion to the Lord of the Lord. Only suske gyan, dry knowledge, cannot help us. Therefore, that has been rejected. And karma anavitam, without karma, one cannot live in this world. For example, we're coming here, I'm driving a car, I'm doing some work to get money to pay for the festival fees, etc, etc. This is karma because it's used in a way that's favorable for the service of Hari Guru Vaishnav, therefore it should not be rejected. Karma means anything we do for our own, to taste the fruits of our own activity. So I'm working hard day and night, money, 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 brighter than sunshine, sweeter than honey, and I have no time for my bhakti. That's an example of karma covering our devotion. Therefore both jnana, knowledge and karma should be used in a way that's favorable to devotion. It should not suppress bhakti. Anukulena krishnanu silanam Silanam means to cultivate. Therefore bhav rupa and chesta rupa. One should cultivate activities by the body, mind and words and by the cultivation of transcendental emotions for the benefit of Krishna. So, why benefit? So, time is a little short, so I'm quickly giving. Guru Maharaj says there's an overextension of the definition or an underextension of the definition of Anukulena. <coughs> for example, when Charan or in Ravan, when Ravan was fighting with Ram, that time Ram is also Bir Purush, he also likes a good fight. That time when Ravan was fighting with Ram, Ram felt one type of happiness. So one can say, well, this can be called bhakti because Ravan's activities are giving happiness to Ram. But our Vishnu Chakravati Thakur has described, no. Because he is actually fighting to kill Ram. <laughs> he is not fighting to give happiness to Ram. Never cannot be called Uttam Bhakti. And an underextension of the definition is, for example, when Madhya Soda, she, pulls, she sees Krishna is eating dirt, she pulls Krishna's ear and slaps him and Krishna is crying. The one may ask, what type of bhakti is this? Madhya Sura is giving pain to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, this cannot be called bhakti. But our Vishnu Chakravali Thakur said, no, 
The mother is always beating because if Krishna eats dirt, then he'll become sick. Therefore, her beating of Krishna is for Krishna's benefit. Therefore, therefore all these things Rupa Goswami has done, but there should be some anusilana, some cultivation. Guru Mahārāj said, only not having an against mood towards Krishna cannot be called bhakti, because a tree has no hatred towards Krishna, but is not doing anything for Krishna. Therefore, bhakti means the cultivation of activities by body, mind, words, and by transcendental emotions. Anu Silanam, Anu here has many meanings. Anu means continuously. Not like one time on Sunday, Hari Bol, Hari Krishna, that's it. Like a continuous stream of honey from a jar, it should be unbroken. Anu also means, most importantly, Anugapya, under the guidance of a pure Guru. We should not think, oh, I am chanting Harinam, I am doing this, this is called Bhakti. Because Bhakti is not an activity of the material mind or senses. Activity is what? It's the bhriti of Bhagavan Sri Krishna's Sarup Shakti. It's not a material tendency to serve Krishna, and the activities of serving Krishna are not material. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, my seva is completely beyond material nature, and we are in material nature, therefore Lord, we cannot perform bhakti. Therefore, most importantly, bhakti should be done under the guidance of a liberated soul. One more last thing. Saraswati Thakur, when he went to South India, the local devotee said, Gurudev, would you like to meet a great devotee of Ram? I mean, he was such a great devotee, he was run over by a train, his legs were chopped off, but he was still chanting, Ram, Ram. Would you like to meet him? So, Asaswati Thakur, that's my Guru Dev's Guru's spiritual master, he said, yes, I always like to meet the devotees. So when that man came to Saraswati Thakur, Saraswati Thakur asked, under whose guidance are you serving Ram? Are you serving Lord Ram under the guidance of Hanuman, or Bharat, or Satrugna, or Sita, or anyone? That man said, no, no, I'm only concerned with Ram directly. So Bhakti said, answer for the title, give pranam, you have no Bhakti at all. <laughs> they were under Silana. Most important thing, Bhakti must be done under the guidance of a liberated soul, of a Guru, then Uttam Bhakti. Then, if our Bhakti has all of these things, and a few more that I probably missed out, then this can be called Uttam Bhakti or pure devotion. Telling Mother Yasoda was beating Krishna, slapping Krishna. Never. Never. He only showed something. I will mean, be. Nice, she looked great. So, we think, we should try to think, what can I do, do for Krishna, for the benefit of Krishna? Even your Laukiki Kriya, worldly activity, we should do for Krishna. What is favorable for Krishna? We should strongly do. What is not favorable to Krishna? Guru Vaishnava, we should give up. So if you are doing bhakti like this, Vasudeva <coughs> Bhagavati, Bhakti Yoga Prayojita, Janata Asu, Bharatyan Gyanam Chahatukam. If anyone is strongly forming this bhakti, what will become? Very soon, Gyan and Bhairagya, Krishna Tattva, Radha Tattva, Prem Tattva, Bhakti Tattva, all kinds of Tattva, he will know. 
and biography, <coughs> detachment from worldly things, surely come. If not comes, then you should think that there is something lacking in our bhakti. So surely, not even a drop of tear comes. No pulak. I understand it. No any symptom that well bhakti. So try to follow very strongly. If detachment from worldly things, worldly desires does not come, then your bhakti you will not shuddha. So I think our bhakti is not shuddha. And Tattva Gyan, Gopis had not gone to any school. But every, all kinds of Tattva Gyan, they used to defeat Krishna. Prahlad Maharaj, he was in, only in the womb of her mother and for 60,000 years he heard from Narada. And that is why from birth he knows everything. So if there is no gap, no barrage, then anywhere some loop and hole in our bhakti, so try to repair it. Dharma Svanishtita, Pulsa, Pishak Sem, Kathasuya. Not Padya Vijatiratim Samayeva hi Kevalam. Dharma Svanishtita. If you are following Bhakti, but there is no taste in Harikatha hearing, then everything is. Then Kyan Bhairag and other things will not come. So first test in hearing katha should come. Badanti tattva vidas tattam jarigyanam advayam brahmeti paramatmeti bhagavaneti shakti. So Sutta Goswami, he can tell him, those who know all kinds of tattva, advaya jnan par tattva. What is advaya jnan par tattva? That is called Brahma, Paramatma and Swayam Bhagavan. Can you? What is Advaigyanatattva? You should all carefully hear. Om Ajnanam Tiharandasya Gyanam Jana Salakaya Chaksuram Militam Yena Tvasmai Sri Guru Vena Shri has ordered me to speak a few words on this verse spoken by Srila Sutta Goswami, Vedanti tat tatva vidas tatvam yaj jnanam advayam prameti paramatmeti bhagavan iti shabhite Bhagavan Sri Krishna is advaya jnan paratatva that is, he's one without a second. In his complete feature, he's Bhagavan. Then his partial manifestations are Paramatma, the super soul in everyone's heart, and Brahma, the uh, all pervading, uh, colorless, odorless, but spiritual substance on which all the Vaikuntha planets are resting, like the spiritual outer space. Our Srila Prabhupada gives the analogy of a hill 
in understanding these three features. Seen from very, very far away, the hill appears like a cloud. Then one comes closer and one sees that it is something green. When one comes very close to the hill, then he sees that there's so much shrubs and trees and birds and uh, plants and so many varieties. So seen from very far away, the Absolute Truth appears as Brahman, the all-pervading aspect of the Supreme Lord. Coming closer, one understands him as the super soul in everyone's heart and in every atom. And when one comes very close, when one has traced the Sadhu Sangha and hears from a bona fide guru and Shastra, then he understands that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead with innumerable manifestations of incarnations, his original form, uh, his expansions, his uh, manifestations like Karuna Dakshai Vishnu and Kira Dakshai Vishnu and Garva Dakshai Vishnu and his incarnations like Ram, Nishringa, Varaha. Another analogy is given of a train. The train seen from very far away looks just like a light. From close up it looks like a big piece of metal and from very close when one enters then one can see all the varieties of seats and newspapers and things. Also the sun. When one sees the sun from very far, then it's just effulgence. A closer understanding is the sun disk over everyone's head. And then one enters the sun planet and meets the sun god. That's like Bhagavan realization. Srila Jiva Goswami gives a very interesting uh, understanding of this verse and Advaita Gyan Paratattva. That is, somebody may give an objection that how can you say that Bhagavan is non-dual, that he is the one without a second absolute truth. So there are three ways of seeing that he is non-dual. Dual. One is his body. Somebody may say, well, he has different parts of his body, therefore it's dual. But actually, although our body, in our body, the parts of our body, one part cannot function for another part with the Supreme Bhagavan Sri Krishna. His every limb of his body can act for every other limb. Ajna, what is that verse? Um, Anjaniyasa Sakalendri of Ritti Manti. Every one of his limbs has the full fledged function of every other limb. He can uh, accept food with his lotus feet when the devotee offers foodstuffs to his lotus feet. He can also eat by hearing, by his ears, when the devotee offers the mantra, Etat Naivadyam Srim Klim Radha Krishna Vyam Nama. So all of the parts of his body can act with the full-fledged function of every other part. And then somebody may say, that he has so many various incarnations. So that's dual. But no, Srila Jiva Goswami explains there's no duality there because as Brahmaji explained in Brahma Samhita, all the Supreme Lord Krishna is like, he's Kalachandra, he's the Supreme Full Moon. And Ramadi Morti Sukalani Amenatistam Nanavatara Makarod Bhuvaneshu Kintu Krishna Swayam Samabhava Paramap Pramanayo Govindam Adipurisham Tamaham Bhajami There's only one moon, but there's a half moon, a full moon, a quarter moon, a new moon, and somebody may say there are different moons, 15 different moons going to the full moon and 15, minute, 15 different moons going to the new moon. But actually there's only one moon and it's either seen fully or it's not seen fully. Then someone may say, okay, well then there's a difference between Krishna and his different energies. But there's no difference. Shakti Shakti Matayor Aveda. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur has explained in his 
um, dasamul shiksha, that both the living entity and this material energy are simultaneously one with and different from the Lord, but never different because they're always fully dependent on the Lord's existence. The Lord is Shakti Shakti Mantayor Aveda. He's non different from His complete Swarup Shakti. And that Swarup Shakti is, has different functions as internal energy, as marginal energy, and as the material energy. And in the spiritual world, has different function as Sandini, as Samvit, and as Ladini. But she is all one complete energy, and this energy is not different from the supreme energetic source. I have some energy. I can throw something, I can talk loudly, I can move around, and that energy is not different from me. So Srila Jiva Goswami has established by these three of AIDS, non-differences, that the Supreme Lord is the one without a second absolute truth. And this was uh, accepted by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in his teachings to Sri Sanatana Goswami, that all of the features of the Lord are his expansions. But the Advaya Gyan Paratatva is Virjendranandan Sham Sundar, the worshipful Lord of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Srila Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur says, that I have no other opinion than Mahaprabhu's opinion. That Araji Bhagavan Vrajesha Tanayas Tadama Vrindavana, the Supreme Worshipable, uh, Absolute Truth, One Without a Second, is Vrajendra Nandan Shamasundar, and this Dham, Vrindavan Dham, is also not different from him. The worship of the Braj Ramanis is the highest form of worship. And the evidence of this is Srimad Bhagavatam. Love of God, Prema, and particularly Braj Prema, is the ultimate goal of life and the highest benefit for the living entity. This is the teaching of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and I have no other opinion and don't accept anybody else's opinion but his. Advaityanta, Krishna Advaityan Patat. That is, any one has no separate existence. Everything in Krishna. Like Balaram, Sri Ram, Nishingadi, all are manifestation of Krishna. Krishna comes in that form. He is Dham Vrindavan, not different. Gopis and Radhika, they are power of Krishna. Whole world has created by whom? Karnapnishai Vishnu. Means coming from Krishna or So, from Gyan Tattva, he is seen like Brahma, the Angakanti of Krishna, and Paramatma, who is our Shakshi in my heart, everyone's heart, and Krishna is swaying. This is in brief all these things. So, Sardhana Munayo Gyan Bhai Raja Gita Pasyanti Atmani Chatmanam Bhakta Sutkrihita. So, following this bhakti, so many rishis, mercy, Vaishnava has visualized. This story, and they are doing bhakti after Sutta Gritaya, after hearing from Guru Vaishnav, and then doing that. Srimatam Swakatha Krishna, Punya Samadha Kirtana, Hidyanta Stoke. 
These are these lines, slokes, are the main thing in Srimad Bhagavatam. And everything explanation of these slokes. So Srila Gurudev has been narrating the second chapter of the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam in sequence of their shlokas. And now Srila Sutta Goswami is beginning to explain the powerful effect of hearing this message of Srimad Bhagavatam. In five shlokas he gives the gradual progress that takes place in the heart of anyone who properly hears this message from the proper source. So he tells Shrinvatam svakata krishna punya sravana kirtana hridhyam taksto hyabhadrani vidunoti suhrit satam Here Srila Sutta Goswami has said that <clears throat> this message of Srimad Bhagavatam is called Krishna Kata Topics about Krishna Svakata Krishna It is about this Supreme Personality of Godhead Bhagavan who is the topmost absolute truth. Srinvatam uh, Svakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana If anyone hears this topic, it is the most exalted spiritual activity that he can perform. And the power of this is that the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna Himself, who is situated within everyone's heart, Pridyantak Sto, He is there in the heart, as the Suhrit, the well-wishing friend of every living entity. And when he sees that someone is attempting to hear about him, then immediately he takes notice, and Hridyantak Stohya Bhatrani Vidunoti. And now he begins to uh, cleanse the heart of all Abhadras. Abhadra means something that is not Bhadra, not auspicious, not helpful not desirable in our life, in our heart. The problem is this, why we have so many anya abhilash, so many other material desires, because we have these contaminations within the heart. But the power of the Srimad Bhagavatam is that by hearing from the proper source, the proper authority, Sri Krishna Himself will cleanse those uh, material desires within the heart. And then, Nashtak praeshu abhadreshu nityam bhagavata sevaya bhagavati uttama shloke bhaktir bhavati naishtiki. Then, by regularly performing bhagavat seva, nityam bhagavata sevaya, then uh, a person begins to regularly hear this message of Srimad Bhagavatam, not just once, once a week, once a month, but daily, constantly, he is absorbed in hearing the message of Srimad Bhagavatam, Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya, but also he is serving the personality who is called the person Bhagavatam, the personification of the message of Srimad Bhagavatam. He is performing service to the pure devotee of Krishna, who has this pure love for Krishna. So, by this process, Nashtak Prayeshu Abhadreshu, uh, almost all of the contaminations within the heart will be gradually cleansed away. And then, Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtiki. Then he comes to the level where his bhakti, his devotion to the Supreme Lord, is no longer unsteady. It is no longer interrupted by so many other pursuits and desires, but now it becomes Naishtiki Bhakti. Now it becomes firmly fixed Bhakti. And then, tada rajas tamo bhava, kama lobha dayaschaye, cheta etair anavitam, stitam sattve prasidati. 
now the effect that has been causing all the problems for progressive spiritual realization, which is the effect of the lower modes of nature, tamagun and rajagun. This causes the heart to be full of lust, anger, greed, illusion, envy, envy and all of these uh, lower desires. So, by this process of hearing, that influence of the lower modes of nature will be removed, and then, kama lobha dayaschaye cheta etayar anavidham. Now the, the person's spiritual consciousness becomes unaffected by these lower modes of nature. And stitam sattve prasidati, now he becomes situated in pure goodness, sattva gun, and prasidati, he becomes very satisfied. No longer he's hampered, no longer he's harassed by all of these lower desires and effects. And then, evam prasanna manaso bhagavad bhakti yogataha bhagavad tattva vijnanam mukta sangasya jayate. Now, his mind becomes prasanna manasa. His mind becomes very satisfied, very peaceful, free from all desires and hankering. Evam prasanna manaso bhagavad bhakti yogataha. This is real pure bhakti to Bhagavan. This is the effect, as Srila Gurudev quoted the shloka, Vasudevi Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga Prayojita, that just by performing this pure bhakti, automatically the influence of a pure knowledge within the heart will arise and also renunciation and detachment. So now the devotee has come to this level where evam prasanna manaso bhagavad bhakti yogata bhagavad tattva vijnanam. He is now realizing bhagavad tattva, the truth of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and mukta sangasya jayate. Now he becomes freed and liberated from the effect of the material nature and he becomes a soul who within this world is like the lotus flower standing above the water, untouched by the water. He is not affected by the lower modes of nature and now he enters into a transcendental position. And then, Vidyate hridaya grantis chidyante sarva samshaya chiyante chasya karmani drishta evatmanishvare Vidyate hridaya grantis In the heart there was this knot. In everyone's heart in the material world it is bound like a knot in the heart. Very difficult to undo this knot. But by the power of this pure bhakti, by the power of this message of Srimad Bhagavatam Bidyate hridaya grantis, this knot is pierced within the heart. And chidyante sarva samshaya, all doubts are removed. Now he's firmly convinced because he has tattva vigyan. He's realized his, re his relationship with the Lord. And now, chiyante chasya karmani, now, the, now his constant repetition of birth and death, the karmic cycle is now terminated and drishta evat manishvare. Now he sees within his own heart she is the Supreme Lord, Personality of Godhead, and now his whole life is one of absolute devotion and surrender to Him. So by the Srimad Bhagavatam, by hearing this message of Srimad Bhagavatam, these guaranteed effects will come. But it is essential to hear from the proper source, from the proper authority, who has realized the message of Srimad Bhagavatam. So, hearing of Srimad Bhagavat is most essential. You know, Parikshit Maharaj, in seven days, he only heard the Harikatha. What he followed? Only hearing. And what became? Went up to the last goal. He told to her to his mother, uh, mother, Uttara, Oh, don't think Krishna as Lord of Lords, Supreme Lord. Like your most beloved. Like gopis, 
They seem to think that Krishna is my most beloved. So you should do like this. So in seven days it will come. So we will hear this katha, Krishna katha pastimes, up to Rasli land more, Brahmad Gita and other things. Then what will happen? This idea will come. And thus gradually you will have opportunity to follow all other things. We have some time, Parishit Maharaj has no time. But he heard so strongly and carefully that in seven, in seven days he went to Golok Vrindavan by that day. Go Pramanandi. Krishna <laughs> Jai Radha Krishna Pranamo Jugala Kesa Radha Krishna Pranamo Jugala Kesa Radha Krishna Pranamo Jugala Kesa